And we are live. Welcome to the process. It is Thursday, February 25th. Ooh, this week isn't going very fast. I can imagine watching this video morning by morning. I look worse and worse as we go along all the way up until Friday. That's, how, that's definitely how I feel. Other day where it didn't go all that great, although some of the some of the plays at the top were good. De DeJounte Murray, SGA, Jared Allen, all fantastic. Wouldn't ask for anything else there. Uh, Jason Tatum, a little bit not so much. But we're on to the next one. Only a six-gamer today, too, which is kind of fun. Um, happy that I don't have to break down nine games. I'm on everything again today. Strategy show, live before lock, etc. Coffee cups, boys. I love it. Cheers. We'll hit the coffee sip right out of the gate. Happy to be here. Happy to have everybody here. For those that have never been here before, the process is the show where we go through every single team. We project out the minutes. We make some changes to rates, and we just sort of get a, an idea of where the slate's going to be uh, moving forward. How'd your super draft lineup go? Did not go well at all. Did not did not finish in the money. Uh, LeBron was bad. Uh, Terry Rozier was bad. It was just bad. Plumlee was fine. Obviously, uh, DeJounte Murray was good, but between between LeBron and Terry Rozier, it was not awesome. So I'm taking a sip of coffee now, guys. I need it. Mac Jeski in the house. That's exciting. The only two people for Osimo awake at this time of the day. I appreciate you supporting me. <laughs> Philip Sharp. Good morning from E Town, PA. Shout out to E Town. Got a buddy that played basketball there. Oh, and they were good at the time, too. 20th in a FanDuel single entry, man. That's good. Nice. Congrats. Yeah, LeBron was rough. Weird, weird, weird slate yesterday. Um, like, the Spurs guys were fine. Nothing interesting really happened. DeJounte Murray, obviously incredible. Um, Just, like, it just ended up... I mean, who saw the Gallo game coming? I certainly didn't. Yeah, Butler looked good, clearly. I did not see that Gallo game coming whatsoever, though. That was not not ideal. Not ideal at all. Anyway, I think it is about that time for us to just dive into this one. Actually, one more thing. It, I got a couple of tweets about like Zach Levine's game yesterday and how I probably hated it. I think he's incredible offensively. Really, really, really good. Uh, th his efficiency this year has been staggering. One of the best offensive guards in basketball right now. It's He's been great. He's really, really bad at defense, and I'm just trying to judge a game based on both sides of the coin and not just fantasy stats. So, you don't have to tweet at me when Zach Levine plays well. I assume he's going to play well offensively. He's really good at that. We don't. The, 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 the difference is how is he on the defensive side of the ball, and that's not that good. Well, let's go ahead and dive in. Let's get into Brooklyn right out of the gate. I need one more sip of coffee. It's been that kind of been that kind of week so far. Ariel Ortiz. I went all in on Allen last night. Well, that's probably good. Uh, he was the center du jour yesterday. Okay, so on to Brooklyn. We know we have no Kevin Durant. Jeff Green questionable. Shamit questionable. TLC probable. Zach Levine is not Chicago's Harden. Charles Hammond, that is not the correct comp. The difference between Zach Levine and James Harden from a defensive standpoint is pretty big. No surprise, Sal was all over Allen. Uh, Allen was a fantastic play. I think a lot of people were all over Allen. All right, let's project out Brooklyn now. I have to assume that everybody is just playing here. And 
I, one thing I need to check, did basketball reference update yet? Nah, see, couldn't even update my database this morning. Basketball reference stats not updated yet for yesterday. So they must have had some sort of stat error. Mikey Mike W cashed out last night. Yeah, buddy. That's what I like to hear, man. Uh, it's excellent to see people showing up with some W's from last night. By the way, 70 of you, 37 likes. The morning crew knows what to do. You guys know how to hit that thumbs up. Charles Hammond, LeBron helped you cash. Uh, I don't think that that's a true statement at all. He just happened to be the guy that was playing last. Ooh, well, let's get into this. I'm just projecting everybody that has a Q tag right now is in. I don't really think I have an alternative. Shamit chest contusion? Sure. Jeff Green, shoulder contusion. Wouldn't actually shock me if Jeff Green didn't play. Um, I think his shoulder's a little bit messed up, but we don't have a choice. We don't. We have to go and assume that he plays, at least for right now, because 6.36 a.m., and we can't be guessing on the Q tags for guys that have only been out for a game. Um, I don't think I'm going to have... All that much to change here. So DeAndre Jordan will be at the five. The question is, does Nick Claxton play now? And I assume the answer is no, as long as Jeff Green is back. But he definitely could. By the way, uh, I saw this yesterday. I don't know if anybody else knows this is the case. There was like a Joe Harris discussion a while back. Do you guys have any idea what Joe Harris is shooting this year? Joe Harris is shooting 50.5% from three on 6.7 6 attempts per game. I saw this yesterday when I was looking through some stats and updating uh, parts of my model. Crazy. 50.5. He's going to be at 50. He, he might be shooting 50% from three at the all-star break. That is insane. Insane. On his most attempts per 36 minutes in his life. That's what happens when you play with Kyrie Irving and James Harden and potentially Kevin Durant. And you're a knockdown shooter. Uh, you get looks that you never thought you would have. So shout out to Joe Harris for being just unable to miss from three. Needs to be spoken about a little bit because that's truly crazy. Okay. Uh, Shump, I played, but I don't expect him to keep playing. I agree. Why would anyone thumbs down? Yeah. John, rough one with Tatum last night. He was not very good. That was pretty problematic. All right. Landry Chamay. Can give up a couple minutes. This one's going to build itself. Where are these extra minutes that I don't see? Take Shaman to 18, actually. Yeah, F for Tatum. Ah, that'd be fun if we gave out grades after the fact. I could actually do that. Retroactive rankings. What happened to Tatum? Uh, he played sort of be the best way to describe it all right so i think that this looks fine these rates should be perfectly fine we didn't make any changes since the last time i did add some extra highlighting so i could see some stats a little bit easier so let's just go ahead and take a peek first and foremost at brooklyn brooklyn nets uh there's a lot to like here actually i mean and by a lot to like you can play James Harden and Kyrie Irving, and that's pretty much it. Harden looks good. Kyrie looks good. Actually, do I have Jeff Green rates in here? No, I don't. I have to update this. We do have to update rates. I forgot that Jeff Green didn't play. Silly me. Why would anyone play Tatum? He admitted he has COVID long hauler symptoms. Got to pay attention. Yeah. Yeah. I'll still play him. How's that? 
Who's the new power forward the Nets signed? Ah, uh, a guy from the G League. I forgot that they actually did that. Uh, what's his name? I can't even remember anymore. The 10 day. Tyler Cook. Tyler Cook. Let's get that name in there just in case. Oh, cool. I have him, so that's good. Hey, Josh, I hit for five grand on DK last night for the second time in three weeks. First season of NBA. You guys at Awesome have helped me a lot. Ryan, that's awesome, man. Uh, I I know how that feels. I know how good you must feel waking up in the morning or seeing it the night before. That's awesome, man. Buy yourself something nice. All right, let's get back to, uh, let's get back to this Brooklyn team. Yeah, so looks like. I've got Harden pretty clearly ahead of Kyrie. He's about a point and a half better on FanDuel and like four points better on DraftKings. Um, price tag really making a difference there. A little bit of DeAndre Jordan I think is okay, but it's just really, really difficult to get to Brooklyn like at all. They don't, everybody else is just playing sort of limited minutes or they're limited fantasy. Obviously I like Joe Harris. We just got done talking about him a little bit, but he's 5,300 and 5,500. Like he's got to really shoot the lights out to be relevant. So, which is fine. But at that price tag, these, these guys are just a little bit overpriced. We might see some value open up if Jeff Green and or Landry Shamit end up out. But Right now, it's Harden and Kyrie. Harden quite a bit ahead of Kyrie. Yes, I still want to play Jason Tatum if he gets tired faster. He could just still be good and be tired. Uh, I'm not going to not play people because, look, it, ownership comes into play. If Jason Tatum's ownership is lower because people don't want to roster him for those reasons, then I might think that he's actually a better play because of COVID. See, it's all, I'm not trying to play him in cash games. That's a very different scenario. GPPs are a different beast. All about probability. Let's go to Dallas. Oh, very refreshing to have a six gamer. I was not looking forward to breaking down 18 teams. 12 is significantly easier to manage. All right, so Dallas, Q tag on Maxi, Q tag on Porzingis. We're going to have one of those days where we don't really get a ton of that information, aren't we? Obviously, Porzingis. Okay, so Carlisle doesn't think it's going to keep him out long. He's still questionable. He doesn't expect it to be long term. He said that on the 23rd. So I think we have to treat Porzingis like he's in maxi left ankle sprain. I think that we could probably see maxi as well. Uh, we got to project both of these guys. So let's just take everything out for Dallas. I don't think we have a choice there. Izzy, welcome. Mike Davis, I had fourth place on main GBP on the 19th. Do better watching the videos and hearing the discussion on different plays. Appreciate you guys a ton. Mike, that's awesome, man. Get that paper. Seeing people win is such an awesome feeling, especially when, you know, at least part of it may have came from me or at least some of my coworkers. It's great. I love doing this. I would leave this camera on for hours if I could, which, by the way, uh, that is not in uh, me asking if I can do that. Everyone behind the scenes at Osimo, I think I would die if I did it, but I would happily leave this on for, I, I would run back the process show in the middle of the day if it worked for our schedule for my second, because I, I sit down probably somewhere in that three to four o'clock range, depending on how big the slate is and basically do this all again with more information. All right. So back to Dallas, back to normal rotations, assuming these guys are playing. So we're going to put Chris Dapps Porzingis in for 31 minutes. James Johnson will be then out of the rotation. Dwight Powell will basically be out of the rotation. 
who in the world was playing backup five? Uh, I guess Willie Colley Stein. Call that 15. Maxi can play two and 28 total. Stotex, that's a good question. Uh, now that you mentioned cash games versus GPPs, is this process good for both or just geared for GPP? So here's what I'll say. This is the easiest thing, easiest way to describe it. Cash game plays are the best plays on the slate, no matter what. They're generally the best point per dollar plays, uh, the best combination of high scoring plays and salary that you'll find. The most efficient plays, the guys that show up in the optimal lineups the most, those are going to be your cash plays. All of those guys are also GPP plays, but the difference for GPPs fully comes into where the field is. If there's, if you have a, if there is a cash play that is 10% owned, maybe your multiples over the field. If there's a cash play that's 75% owned, but you think that he should only be in the optimal 40% of the time, then you may be able to come in a bit lower in GPPs on those cash plays. Good plays are always good plays, no matter what. The way that you fluctuate your ownership is what changes for GPPs. Let's see what else we have here. Mike Davis, you're a smart man. I appreciate you. Yeah, Adam, uh... I have done game plan type streams in the past. I have streamed my office hours in the past. Speaking of office hours today, 1 p.m. Eastern time in premium Slack. If you want to ask me any questions, I have gone live for that from periodically in the past. So I'd be happy to do that again in the future. All right, let's keep this moving. Point guard minutes back to. We just got to give Trey Burke his like eight minutes. Brunson was playing 26 a game. Yeah, that works. I guess that'll allow me to give Luca the final 14 minutes there. Yeah, that's that's just going to have to be what it is. I hate projecting Luca's minutes because I never know what position to put him at. Most people are going to be like, he's a point guard. He's like literally three different positions, and it's kind of annoying. Like, I bet he classifies as a small forward. All right, so there's 36 for Luca. Rest of this should be pretty easy. Dorian Finney-Smith. I mean, we're talking 34 minutes. That's about as easy as it gets. Who here couldn't sleep because of the top shot drop? Probably a lot of people at this point. Really hoping I get one of those packs today. I actually have to pay attention. I haven't been down in the top shot stuff just because I put too much time into this. I just, I can't sit at this desk for 80 hours, but got to take a shot at these packs today. Harry Wynn, I, uh, I'm currently a subscriber to Awesome Mode. Does that give me access to premium Slack? Yes, it does. If you go to the website on the right hand side in the drop down menu, there's a uh, section that says social, there's a sign up link for Slack. Dallas's minutes are super easy to project when no one is out. And when people are out, it really stinks. All right, Jay Rich had been playing 30. I'm going to leave it at 30. 26 and 2 for Tim Hardaway Jr. Does 28 sound fine? That seems a little high. It'll be fine. Yeah, you can. It, it can break really, really well. I've seen a couple of really good packs of friends and stuff. Uh, we'll just give Dwight Powell those four spillover minutes, and now we got to change some Dallas rates because obviously everything that we have set up in here right now is for Kristaps Porzingis and Maxi Kleber being out. So let's fix this. Boop, boop, boop. Ooh, Dallas, Philly. Yeah, let's really hope Porzingis is back. Embiid might put him in a basket. All right, who's not playing here? Playing, 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 playing. All the way down to Wes Wundu. Josh Green. Tyrell Terry. Hinton Bay. This is the morning NBA Top Shot video. I wouldn't be much help there. 
I could uh, I could speak about it from a financial aspect. I couldn't really speak about it from an actual market aspect. All right, let's update these rates. By the way, I did a little bit of updating to my model in the back end, just changed some of the uh, the way that rates decayed. So I'm hoping that it saves me a little bit of time, makes my rates a little bit more accurate from the jump. Porzingis' rates this season, 27.5% usage spot on. Luka Doncic this season, 36.7. We could lock him at 36. Actually, 36.5 feels about right. Assist rate seems fine. Everything else seems fine there. Is Porzingis rebounding more? Nope. Technically less. Yeah, if you're uh, if you're if you're just starting in DFS, honestly, the best thing that you can do if you're just starting, definitely max out as many get get all of your entries into the beginner contest as you can. I probably wouldn't enter anything else until I exhausted all of the beginner entries, both on FanDuel and DraftKings, and then I would be putting in as much money into Super Draft, No House Advantage, uh, the sites where you can get some overlay. All right, let's get a couple more of these Dallas rates. So Dorian Finney-Smith to 12. Jalen Brunson usage rate, 19 and a half. Josh Richardson usage rate, 18 and a half. Maxi Kleber, wow. Maxi Kleber's usage rate this season, 9.7%. That is rough. Tim Hardaway Jr., 21. That should cover me for Dallas. Let's see where we end up. All right, so Luca clearly at the top. Not a ton of value coming out of Dallas either. A little bit of Porzingis, maybe Dorian Finney-Smith. Let's see. Can I make this look? Let's see if I could actually get a better visual for us for everything that we've looked at so far. That'll work. This will work. Let's fix this uh, little table here, and then we'll be good. Let's move team up here. Make that everybody. And then is it eight. It is eight. Great guess. When you're good, you're good. This way we could have a little bit better of a discussion of plays as we move through the slate. So I can take Sim out of there. That actually looks fine. Fantasy points, salary, minutes, boom. Don't need Sim. I will explain what I'm doing in a second, guys. But I want you guys to be able to keep track of all the good value plays for the day as we work our way through this slate. So we've looked at Two teams so far, Atlanta and Boston. Nope, not Atlanta and Boston. We've looked through two teams so far, Brooklyn and Dallas. <laughs> Tried going in alphabetical order. That didn't work. Then we'll do this for DraftKings as well. Brooklyn, Dallas. Good. Good. Change the design of this table so that I actually like looking at it. Perfect. All right. So, so far... Harden, Doncic, Kyrie, oddly enough, are the best plays on DK to date, uh, even ignoring like salary and stuff. That's how little value there are on Brooklyn and Dallas. And then on the FanDuel side, Harden, Doncic, Kyrie, all basically relatively the same, rel like next to their salary. So like there's not too much of a difference between Harden and Kyrie given their prices. Porzingis and DeAndre Jordan are in the next tier. But we can track this a little bit easier now moving forward. And we can just add Denver. So like, I'll add Denver now. So I want to be able to, like, talk about the slate as a whole as we move through it. So let's switch back now and take a look at Denver. Nuggets, still no Gary Harris, still no Paul Millsap, no Jermichael Green, no P.J. Dozier. So we're used to this. Oh, that coffee is tasting really good. 
Uh, Josh, is the game plan live stream on Awesome O a members only version of the process? I found it on the site after looking for it for two days. Uh, sort of. It, it's just basically like a live Q&A with someone from the site, whether that's Alex, uh, Sean's on, Steve Buzzard, DeColtz. Uh, you get a couple different options. But it's, it's probably more of like a, an actual question show than... Like in this one, I'm not really taking any questions. I mean, like I answer some questions when I see it, but it's mostly just dictating what I'm doing. Um, schedule for today, uh, everything. Contenders video strategy show live before lock. Uh, this is going to be the same Denver rotation, huh? So we're going to be probably recommending Michael Porter Jr. in a couple minutes. If I had to guess. Jokic, 36 minutes. Murray, 36 minutes. Barton, 33 is probably fine. RJ Hampton did not play on the 23rd. So is RJ Hampton out of the rotation now? Does Alex go through the same process of projecting minutes every slate? I, I If he's not, if he's not doing something close to this process... He has a time saver that he doesn't allow anybody else to know, which would be sick. Um, but no, I, if you're playing NBA in some way, you have to be you have to have your finger on the pulse of rotations and stuff like it's different for baseball. You don't have to care that much. Um, you know, that that sort of builds itself. This is one where you actually it, it does help to have a cursory understanding of how each of these teams works. I think that I'm going to have to take RJ Hampton out of this rotation. Three, four, five, six, seven. Do they really only play eight dudes? I don't expect that to happen again. They're not going to, he's not going to switch to an eight man rotation with four guys out. So I don't, I might just have to re reduce his minutes. Compazzo is going to need at least one of those minutes. Um, I should probably take a minute away from Will Barton. But I don't even really... I guess Monty... So Monty Moore started the last game, played 33 minutes. I just need to get his minutes up. That's probably the first mistake. So let's go ahead and move him straight to 31. I have him at 28 now. So we'll take three away from Will Barton at shooting guard. Move those to Monty Morris. And then I'll take those same three minutes away from RJ Hampton and give them to Will Barton. And then, you know, Porter played... Porter's playing monstrous minutes. He just needs to shoot. Um, Zeke Naji played 23 minutes. I think I need to take a minute off of him. I just don't know where to put these minutes. I guess it's Porter. These minutes look fine now. Rates should all be based on last game where there were no changes. So we can leave that go. If we switch to Denver... It's Jokic, Porter, Murray, Monty Morris. Okay, that looks fine. So we'll talk through what I have on the screen here. Um, actually, I'm going to cut this and make it a little bit easier. So let's make a new sheet. Call it the process. I'll start working on this today. I'll build us out a really good view of everything we want to see. FanDuel and DraftKings uh, moving Moving forward. All right, there we go. So what we've got on the screen now, all three teams that we've looked at so far, in order of how I would say they are the best plays. So Jokic at the top on both sites, Harden two, Luka three, Kyrie four, uh, Michael Porter Jr. a little bit better on FanDuel than he is on DraftKings. Makes sense. Porter Jr., 5,700 on FanDuel, 6K on DK. Let's, yeah, this looks good. I think this will be helpful. Well, six-game slate, guys, playing north of 30 minutes. If you don't like Michael Porter Jr. today, you're probably going to have a real sad day. Whether or not he plays well, it, you can't avoid a guy playing north of 30 minutes at 5,706K. It's just, that's that's not going to get you anywhere. I wish I could take like a, a poll on which color tab I should make the process show. Not that anybody would care, but like I would care. We're going with uh, orange. So yeah, that's where, this is where we stand now. Basically... 
like we're going to need we want to stay in this like negative uh, like under negative 10 or above negative 10 i guess so anything in that area is going to be pretty much smashy type plays and then as we work our way down you know these guys are in order so it's going to be really difficult to play some of these guys my boom percentage is a little bit different than alex this is the likelihood of hitting three x three and a half x plus 22 i like to be a little bit more extreme with it there we go what do i think about barton um of the people that we've looked at so far he is the ninth ranked guy on dk and the eighth ranked guy on Fanduel. all right let's keep it moving let's get out of denver who is next the Los Angeles Clippers. So let's see where we end up here. I assume this looks terrible too. Uh, the Clippers have not looked like a very good fantasy team as of late. We'll see where if we find any value as we work our way through this slate. So moving on to the Clippers now. Clippers taking on Memphis. Good spot, I guess. Yeah, Gallo, 10 for 12 from three last night. Truly insane. All right, uh, Lou Williams in, Pat Patterson out. Not that it matters. Everything else should be relatively the same, so we just have to think about rotations. Um, by the way, 150 people, 80 likes. I don't even have to really ask. You guys are going to get us to that 100 mark. I think we want to set a new goal where we want 100 likes by 7 o'clock. Israel Williams came in 44th place in the $3 contest with a single bullet. Had one snowflake. Josh's best play on the slate, Jalen Brown. I don't know about best play on the slate, but I was very high on Jalen Brown. All right. Kawhi's minutes look fine. I think 34 is a realistic number. Although, in theory, I should probably move that up to 35. So let's do that. Who can I take the minutes from? This is where it's going to get really tricky. I'll take one from Batum. Andrew Kang with the super chat. So correct about MPJ. I hate Gallinari Danilo. Uh, he crushed me two nights ago, but Lafayette swore by him last night. So I had him in 50% of my lineups again paid off. Man, that's awesome. That's too much Gallo, even though it worked, but that's awesome. Okay. Hmm. Man, Terrence Mann is just like truly a part of this rotation now. Pat Bev down to 20 minutes the last game. They didn't play Lou Will, but Luke Kennard got 11 minutes. So I assume Luke Kennard is just not going to be in the rotation today. Uh, Lou Will appears to be fully healthy. Serge Ibaka... 22 minutes seems fine. Zubach at 20 seems fine. Marcus Morris at 25 seems fine. Who am I giving minutes to that doesn't deserve them? This is I'm having trouble finding minutes for whoever it is that I need to find minutes for. Hmm. Yeah, Allen was fantastic. Really smart of the Brooklyn Nets to get rid of him so that they can continue to have DeAndre Jordan. I guess I could take a minute from Pat Bev. Reggie Jackson played 28 minutes with no Lou Will, but he played four the game before that. So I probably should take one more minute away from him. Since I play mainly cash, I focus more on the bust column. Is that correct process and logic? Uh, not necessarily. On it, like to me, if I'm playing cash, I'm focusing on at least on the boom bust tool, the optimal column. The more likely you're in the optimal, the better you are as a cash play. I would use bust potential and boom potential in cash games as like tiebreakers for two individual guys. All right, I think we're gonna call it on minutes for the Clippers. These rates are all correct. Um, I didn't make any changes to the Lou Will, Lou Canard news that came out two nights ago. 
Um, I didn't think that it was going to bring Luke Kennard into play, and I didn't have any Lou Will, so I thought that it was largely a wash. And I was also just lazy, so there's that. So if those are the rates for the Clippers, we can go ahead and review the Clippers individually. Kawhi and just about it, which is not surprising. This slate has been not fun to look at so far. So on DraftKings, I have Kawhi behind Jokic, Harden, and Luka. Uh, slight, he's about a point and a half ahead of Kyrie, quite a bit ahead of Murray. On FanDuel, however, I have James Harden, Kawhi Leonard, and Luka Doncic, all three as basically the exact same play relative to salary. Good luck sifting through that one. That'll be a blast. I am pretty high on Kawhi today. Let's see. 49.1 divided by 35. 1.4. So he's a 1.4 fantasy point per minute guy, and that's exactly where I have him projected against Memphis. I'm not I'm not upset about that. Let's move it on from the clips. On to Memphis. Yeah, that's interesting. Makes it easier. What do we got going on in Memphis now? I'm assuming they have all sorts of weird stuff. Q tag on Dylan Brooks, and that's it. Okay. So what is Brooks out with? Because he doesn't really miss a ton of time. Sore right thigh. Guess we need to assume that Dylan Brooks is back. So let's clean out these minutes. Let's start from scratch. This slate is easy to cash, especially with... Rose lightning bolts? I don't get it. How did Lucas Samanich do last night? How do you think he did? Drop roses, that clown. All right, John Morant, 33 minutes. Sure. Actually, I think that should be 34. We'll give Tyus Jones the backup run at point guard, so 14. Um, On to Joval. Call that 28 minutes. Gorgie Jang, not a part of the rotation anymore. I'm going to... Has it just been Tillman as the backup? Bang, bang. 48 on the dot. Must be. Uh, Lamelo is the rookie of the year. Sam, super draft did not go well last night, unfortunately. 28 and 20 on Joe Val and Tillman. I don't really like. I hope that doesn't make Tillman pop at all. Uh, we got to go to Brandon Clark at the four. I think 26 minutes seems fine, which would allow me to go to Kyle Anderson for 22 and four. I'll call it 26. Actually, I'll let's give him one more. Make it 27. Uh, Dylan Brooks. I expect him to, if he plays, to play 28 minutes, so that seems fine. Yes, I was on Halliburton for Rookie of the Year earlier this season. I didn't think that LaMelo would get the sort of scoring chops that he's had. Um, and he's just been, without question, better than I ever expected. I didn't think that he'd be able to shoot as well as he has. Fifty sixty-three 63 more minutes to go. Still need to get in Grayson Allen, Desmond Bain, and DeAnthony Melton. So I think it's pretty much just going to be like 20 minutes a piece. Ooh, that's three guys. So if they go, will they go to a 10 man, I guess? How many guys played here? Nine, 10. Okay. So they go, they went to 10 before. I expect them to maintain a 10 man rotation. Oh, I forgot about Justice Winslow too. Wow. Somebody's going to get a haircut here. It's not going to be Justice Winslow either. All right, so Dylan Brooks, Justice Winslow is going to play, have to assume, like 24 minutes. Dylan Brooks needs to move nine of those minutes. So we have 39 minutes to go at the shooting guard spot for some split of Melton, Bain, Grayson, Allen. I would have expected DeAnthony Melton to be the guy as a priority here, but I feel like Desmond Bain is ahead of Melton in the rotation.
it's not that we were on Luka Samanich last night. It's that he was flat minimum and starting for the Spurs, and he became a value play. But we never thought that he was anything more than like a 10 percenter. All right, I'm going to prioritize Grayson Allen first. I think he plays 23 minutes, and then I have to give the other 16 to Bain. I don't think that DeAnthony Melton is going to play today. And if he does, at some point, someone is going to miss out of this rotation for the Memphis Grizzlies now that these bodies are getting back. Andres, good morning, man. Cheers. We're going to need to pay very close attention to the Memphis Grizzlies rotations moving forward. I also need to pull all new rates across the board for the Grizz with um, Dylan Brooks out. It's amazing how my brain does not fire. Still no stats from basketball reference. Bummer. 181 people, 107 likes. You guys are the best. We hit my mark perfectly. So we need... Who do I need to take off here? We'll take off Gorgi Jang. We'll take off John Conchar. Who else? McDermott needs to go because I know he can't play. And then Tim Frazier. All right. So first guy's rates that we need to put in would be Ja Morant. Surprise, surprise. Ja, 27.8% usage in 418 minutes without uh, the guys that aren't going to play today on the floor. Um, that's exactly where I have him. I have his normal usage at 27.7. So it looks like those updates for when everybody is healthy are cleaned up a little bit. Brandon Clark, 18.8. Perfect. Dylan Brooks. 24.6. Okay, so Dylan Brooks is down a bit. We'll go 25.5 there. Grayson Allen, 14%. We'll go 15. Jonas, 24.6. So we'll stick at 24. Joe Val and actually, Justice Winslow next. 19.6% usage in 28 minutes thus far. He's normally a 22 guy, but I think that sticking at 20 is fine as he works his way back. Seven, we'll stick at 18 for Kyle Anderson. Tillman, 16 and a half. All righty. All this looks good. Do I need to touch any other rates? Assist rate looks fine for Morant. Melton at 5.8, not in the rotation. Kyle Anderson at six, that's fine. Tyus Jones at 11, close enough. Rebounding rate. Uh, Kyle Anderson at nine. That's fine. Joe Val 14. Close enough. Brandon Clark eight. Close enough. All right. Here's where we look for the Memphis Grizzlies. Ooh, not much of anything here. This doesn't look very good for the Grizz. So if I add the Grizzlies to our new table that we're looking at, Let's add Memphis, and you'll see that Memphis not grading out all that well. So we have John Morant. Of everybody that we've looked at so far, John Morant is eighth on DK, but behind Porter, Murray, Irving, Leonard, Doncic, Harden, Jokic. Don't get the sense that we're going to be going to John Morant with any sort of regularity today. Uh, he's just not, not grading out all that well against the Clippers. Nah, and then who's the next best? Joe Val is okay. Like some of these guys are fine, but you definitely want to be concentrated at the top. We need to find some value because all of the actual value on this slate is actually coming from the more expensive guys. So we need some pay down options. Stat. Let's get to Milwaukee. Are we gonna have Drew Holiday back? I don't think we do. He is doubtful today. Everybody else is back and ready to go so we need to take a look i shouldn't have to change any rates or anything for milwaukee this should just sort of be what it's been uh clippers don't really play big after big they play 20 minutes of of each zubach and that's it for centers 
We don't have to act like Serge Ibaka is a true big. I think everything here for Milwaukee is fine. Um, DJ Augustine, like everybody's... I could probably take one of these DJ Augustine minutes away, but at the same time, he did play 26 minutes in a, a not close game. Yeah, I didn't have any Gallo yesterday either, but I also didn't want any Gallo. Once Collins was playing, I didn't think that Gallo would soak up as many minutes as he did. And look, here's the deal. Uh, kudos to people that got to Danilo Gallinari yesterday. He shot 10 for 12 from three. Like, I don't... <laughs> I mean, it's probably... That's certainly the most threes he's taken in a game this year. Clearly, 10 is a record for him overall. It's the best shooting day he's ever had in his career. Uh, when's the last time Gallo took 12 threes in a game? Maybe never. I'm not going to beat myself up over a guy having that kind of day. He did it on points and points alone. All right. Who do I have over projected in minutes? Is it Portis? Maybe. I'll give one more minute to Bryn Forbes. Really not much that you could look at from Milwaukee. This team is set in stone until Drew gets back. They are pretty big favorites. Two biggest total on the slate. Yeah, Giannis is the dude today. Giannis is now the official preferred pay-up option on the slate. Check it out. Let's add Milwaukee to the list. Add Milwaukee to the list. Can I change the order of those things? Yes, good. Yeah, Giannis is at the top of the heap now. I have him basically like two points ahead of Jokic on DraftKings and like 2.3 points uh, ahead of Jokic on FanDuel. He's $600 more expensive than Jokic on FanDuel. But now this is where we can sort of do the, the priority system. In a cash game, I'd be more likely to get to Giannis than anybody else. But if Giannis has a ton of ownership and say like Kawhi doesn't, there's a balancing act where you would want to get to a little bit more Kawhi. But Giannis right now is my favorite play on the slate. Do we have anybody else showing up? Middleton looking okay. He's 10th overall on DraftKings. 8th overall on FanDuel. So Middleton looking a little bit better on FanDuel, which makes sense. He's $600 cheaper. There's not too much else you can get to here. Maybe a little DiVincenzo or Brooke Lopez, but that's about it. Milwaukee starting to get priced up. They're, once Drew gets back, uh, they're going to go on a day or two where no one gets to them. Up to 204 people, only 121 likes. And I say only, like, I'm serious. I appreciate you guys for being here. Josh, you like Bledsoe against his old team. Let's find out. On to the New Orleans Pelicans. Pelicans have everybody healthy. They're on the back-to-back, -back, right? So I'm going to have to look up their minutes from yesterday because basketball reference isn't updated yet. So let's go to cleaning the glass. And pull up the Pels. I have a subscription. Log me in. Why is Monty Morris rated so high? Is he? Yeah, 4,800 on DraftKings, 4,700 on FanDuel, and playing 31 minutes a game, potentially as the starter? That's why. All right, so minutes for the Pels. Now we got this up, so we can at least scope it out a little bit. Lonzo played 35. What's the final of this game? Pels one by 10. Okay. Most of this is going to be okay. Brandon Ingram's minutes are going to be fine. Uh, Zion's minutes are fine. Adams played 31 minutes. That is an interesting development because we had him projected a bit lower than that. I'm going to give him a couple additional minutes now, even on the back to back. Willie Hernan Gomez a little bit less. So let's go to 26 and 18. I think that'll make. A little bit more sense. Uh, Josh Hart played 29 minutes. I have him at 30. That's fine. Kira Lewis played 7. Nikhil Alexander-Walker played 6. So, stands to reason. I'm going to take like 6. Nope. 
I did that backwards. I'm going to take like five minutes away from Kira Lewis and give them to Nikhil Alexander Walker. Not that either one of these guys are going to be in play. All of these rates are going to be the same as they were for yesterday. Although I guess I could. Let's just cut JJ Reddick's rates, but that'll be fine. That's it for the Pelicans. This one's easy. They're playing on the back to back. Uh, they don't appear to have any injuries. I don't get the sense that they'd be sitting out Adams or something. So I think this is just going to have to be what it is. Let's take a look at the Pelicans. We're moving through this pretty quick. Ah, Jose, that sounds like a good time, man. Enjoy yourself. Yeah, Zion and then not much else. So let's add the Pelicans and see where everybody lands in context. But their value is very difficult to be found. So Zion, I have... He, all right, so he's behind this clear tier at the top where he's a bit behind Kyrie. He's behind... I'd rather have Michael Porter Jr. I'd rather have Kyrie. Well, I'd rather have Michael Porter Jr. on FanDuel. Zion, seventh overall on DraftKings. Eighth overall on FanDuel. Man, we have no value. No va The best value play we have so far is Monty Morris at 4,700 on FanDuel or 4,800 on DK. We don't have a single player sub 5K that I think is like really good yet. That is nuts. This is a really difficult slate thus far. We have five teams to go. Let's get to the Knicks. Uh, they didn't play yesterday, right? No. So the minutes that I have will be fine. Get to the Knicks. Uh, Randall at 37 minutes. I have no issue. 17 on Taj. <laughs> Taj Gibson's starting to play a little bit more. Of course he is. Of course he is. Surprise, surprise. Didn't expect to see that. Oh, wait. No Alfred Payton. Did I not look at news? Now I understand why people were town rows. Doubtful tag on Alfred Payton. That is interesting. That is very interesting. Okay, let's gut this and figure it out. Knicks are the first team that we're going to actually be able to get excited for. So, Derek Rose played 27 minutes here. I don't think that he can play too much. I don't want to overreact. I think quickly might be the guy that benefits the most. So, let's do 28 and 20. Actually... Who? Let's look at the starting lineup for a second. Who's? What was the starting lineup for the Knicks the last time they played? Played Golden State one by two, or no, they didn't. Lost by a bunch. Uh, all right. So Peyton started, played the whole first quarter. The normal rotation there. Quickly was the direct backup for Peyton. And Rose is the close to direct backup for Barrett. But in theory, they could all close together. So Randall, Peyton, Barrett, Gibson, Rose close? Jesus. Okay. So that that is that was an active decision. They closed with Derrick Rose, Taj Gibson, R.J. Barrett, Alfred Payton, Julius Randle. I have no... Who are they playing? Sacramento. I have no reason to suspect that they wouldn't close with Taj Gibson again over Nerlens Noel. That, that, that just makes sense to me. Rose was in the closing lineup in this situation no matter what. I'm guessing they move quickly directly into the starting lineup and leave Rose where he was. Creator on the second unit, finishing guy. So I think that quickly is going to need to play pretty sizable run. I'm going to give him 28 to start, and we'll see where we end up. But the minutes that are going to be really important... So has Noel been closing on other games? Where did Nick set? Didn't expect to spend so much time on the Knicks. So Nerland's Noel... Okay, so he has been closing. Minnesota, Orlando, Atlanta, Houston. Four straight closing runs. 
But all right, and that was a blowout, so that one didn't matter. I wouldn't be surprised if we're finally at the point in time where Tibbs is starting to knock off some minutes to all of his boys. He fouled out. How quickly did he foul out, though? Is that the reason? Because he just he fouled out in the middle of the third quarter? One, two, three. No, he didn't. Nerlens Noel just didn't play. They took him out, and they went straight to... Uh, if the Knicks trade for Andre Drummond, they the entire uh, team should be sued for malpractice because they already have a center that's better than him. Uh, malpractice is definitely not the right word, but it's too early for me to think about words that explain how bad the Knicks are. All right, so normally I would give Nerlens Noel like 28 minutes, but I don't think that that's the case because I would not be surprised if Taj Gibson is now like the new closing center for... The Knicks, like, I don't want to overreact to one game, but that is very tibsy if it happens. Nerlens Noel played very normal minutes and played 24. I'm going to give him 25. And I'm going to give Taj Gibson 23. That's Reggie Bullock. I'm going to be higher right now. I'm going to be higher on Taj Gibson than anybody else in the industry. I know this for a fact. Uh, we'll see if that is going to create a problem for value. But if Taj has the ability to close, we need to... It doesn't really matter who the Kings close with. Whether it's Bagley or Rashawn Holmes, Taj Gibson can close with the five. It, that's some super tib stuff, man. I think that the minutes on Quickly and Rose can go higher, but we'll get to that when we get to it. Uh, Obi Toppin's just going to play like his normal 12 minutes, so that's easy. And then I can give Julius Randle a straight 36, so that piece is easy. Um, So we got to get to Reggie Bullock, RJ Barrett. And then do they dust off Austin Rivers after basically not playing? That'll be an interesting discussion point. So Barrett, I mean, I think that we have to just project him for like 30 minutes at the two. Maybe at the three, I guess. Uh, both, maybe. We'll just put him at the three since it doesn't matter. We got to give Reggie Bullock. So Reggie Bullock played 18 minutes. Why did that happen? What did he do? So he played, he started... And then he didn't play at all in the fourth quarter as well. Bench mob went on a 12-3 run, and then they kept those two guys. Okay. That's all fine. Nick's tricky today. This is going to be a spot that you need to pay close attention because, one, they're playing Sacramento, a terrible defense. So there's a lot of relevance there. This is going to get dicey. I uh, have to assume that they don't want to totally always close with Reggie Bullock. So I think, you know, 26 minutes for Reggie Bullock feels about right. If Peyton is out, Rose is playing 30 plus. I don't know how true that is from a health perspective. All right, so I have 32 minutes to go between Burks and Rivers. I think that's actually going to shake out pretty easily. I can give Burks 23. I can give Rivers 9. I think that all seems fine. We're going to need different rates now, too. So let's get rid of everything there. Next team, man. This is the trickiest spot on the slate. I'm really curious to see where the uh, where the numbers end up being. So let's get Peyton off. Let's get Smith Jr. off. Let's get Nilakina off. Take Knox off. Pinson off. Apple Watch is charged. Let's get that bad boy back on. Guys. It takes me a little bit to get warmed up. Now I have so much energy. Started doing uh, Whole30 on Monday. 
Um, so four days, it's well, three days in today will be day four. I feel good right now. Oh, oh, I got to take Mitchell Robinson off. I knew there was something that I was like obviously missing. Feeling darn good. Placing the top 50% of all 50 50 lineups last night and still lost over 50% of my money. Oh, that's rough. All right, I think these rates should be okay now. So let's see where everybody ends up. Quickly is the first guy that I need to touch on. 26.5% usage at this point. So I'm sticking at 26. Doesn't see much of an assist change. That might be the coffee. So this is primarily decaf now. I only do a little bit of caffeinated coffee, a little bit more decaf. I read that uh, Mark Cuban had, has been drinking a lot of decaf in the morning. He switched a little bit because of the caffeine crashes. So what I'm trying to do is do a little, significantly less caffeine to start my day, and I'm doing a little bit of a boost around noon. Andrew, man, that's awesome. Uh, I also think I might be allergic to nightshades, but that's neither here nor there. I do feel fantastic. Like I, I've been, I've been eating pretty well, even with having to cut out, you know, all of the crunchy carbs that I love. Julius Randall, twenty nine percent usage with no Peyton, no Mitchell Robinson. I'm just going to go to twenty eight and a half. I don't want to overreact too much, but he does see his assist rate drop. I assume that's because of guys like Derrick Rose and Alec Burks just being on the floor more. I'm guessing his rebounding rate goes up, though. 13.7? Yeah, a little bit. RJ Barrett. Uh, only 81 minutes in this scenario. 22.7 usage. We'll stick at 23. Basically, no assist rate to be found on Barrett. Rebounding rate either. Um... Taj Gibson, this one will be important. 113 minutes, 8.8% usage. Now, I can't go all the way that low, but I am going to go all the way down to like 10 and a half because I don't think he's going to be involved. He's not even rebounding all that much either. So that should mute things. Nerland's Noel usage rate, 12.7, so I can keep him at his normal rates. Here's the one that's going to be most important. Derek Rose usage rate, 121 minutes, 27.1% usage. He's normally a 28 guy, so I'm going to leave him at 28. Assist rate, 8.6. I think that's fine. Alec Burks, final guy to project, 16% usage in 207 minutes. That's not what you would expect out of him, but I have to at least mute him a little bit. So I think these rates look good. For the Knicks for today. I have no confidence whatsoever in the uh in the minutes though. So for the Knicks, just the Knicks on the surface. Julius Randle and Emmanuel quickly stand out on FanDuel. I have Derek Derek Rose being 5,700 on FanDuel makes him a, a bit of a tough sell. The minutes will be everything there. If you can get him up to like 30 or 31, 32, then he will be significantly more. He's still in play. On DraftKings, though, quickly only 4,100 in comparison to 4,600. That's really nice value. Randall at 9,100, I don't mind getting to at all. And then Rose is 4,600. I think he looks good. But I think quickly is probably a few points ahead of Rose based on where I have them now. I have them both at 28 minutes. I think it's more than feasible that they can play, that Rose plays 30 maybe. I think it's feasible that quickly plays more than that. I'm not entirely comfortable with the minutes on Rose and quickly, so we're going to need a bit more information. Starting lineups will be really important here. If quickly does move into the starting lineup just into Peyton's place and they leave Rose where he was, then I feel really good about this. If they move Rose into the starting lineup, then I think 30 minutes is more of a floor for him. Um, we won't know that until a little bit later. This game is at 7.30, so we should have this information by lock. I'm on live before lock, so tune into it. All right, let's see where these guys now land in context of the slate. We add the Knicks to DraftKings, and we add the Knicks to FanDuel. Quickly jumps up to be my number five play so far on DK. And this is just raw. This isn't like sim results or anything. Uh, quickly, I think, is going to be 
a little bit more popular just given the way that this is breaking down. But quickly looking like the preferred, very clearly the preferred value play on DK by multiple points. That one's really easy to see. On FanDuel though, 4,600 for quickly. Incredible value play in comparison to the rest of the slate. We really don't have any value. For example, quickly is 4,600 on FanDuel. Monty Morris is 4,700. Uh, I have quickly four and a half points, basically four and a half points better than Monty Morris at $100 less. So that is quickly is now the preferred value play on Rose. He's okay. Pretty similar to DeAndre Jordan today. But again, if we find out Derek Rose is starting, that changes everything. Can you play both in a, in a lineup? Yes, absolutely. On a six game slate, for sure. More so on DK than on FanDuel, just because Derrick Rose's $5,700 price tag on FanDuel isn't all that appealing. But again, if he's starting, it's more appealing. All righty, next team up, the Orlando Magic. I feel like the Magic play every day. This team is always on the slate. No Cole Anthony, no Aaron Gordon, so this should be a blast. I should be getting most of this wrong. Do we have stats yet from Basketball Reference? No. All righty, let's project Orlando. Man, I thought I was going to get done this even faster, but we've had a lot to talk about. It's already 7.36. I am behind where I wanted to be today. Oh, well. Well, that's a mistake. Okay. Okay. Chase and Randall, 18 minutes. Good. Michael Carter Williams, 30 minutes. Good. Vooch, 35 minutes. Good. Ken Birch, backup, 13. Good. That's easy. Aminu, 19. Close enough. We'll move some of that around if we have to. Actually, we'll do that right now. Aminu to 21. Uh. Just make that 21 right there. There we go. Chuma Okiki, 22. Fine. Dwayne Bacon, 17. Fine. Evan Fournier, 30. Not fine. He needs those extra two minutes. Um, yeah, let's do that. Let's give 32 to Fournier. Terrence Ross, I'm sure, is going to keep shooting the lights out, but I've got him in for 30. I need to give one more minute to James Ennis. Take it from Mo Bamba. These rates are the same as they've been, so there's no chance I'm changing anything other than uh, just locking in Al Farouk Aminu. But the rest of these guys should be spot on. Orlando's had the same rotation for a bit. These guys are probably a little overpriced too. Okay, so Vooch at 9,900 and 10K would be the standout piece. Not much else to look at from Orlando, which surprises me. But if you want to know how slow Orlando plays and how much of a defensive slog they are, they're making a Brooklyn Nets team only have a 227 overall total. So if we add in the Orlando Magic, and if we add in the Orlando Magic, I don't get the sense we're going to see too much here. Yeah, so Vooch comes in fifth overall and fourth overall, but he's going to be behind Jokic for sure at the center spot. And... You know, he's going to be behind Luka. He looks good, but I think he's just going to blend in a little bit more than I would like him today. Still probably, you know, pretty significantly owned, but uh, I to me, he's the second best center. If we just look at FanDuel center, since I think it's a little bit easier to visualize, of the guys we've looked at so far, it's Jokic by about a point over Vooch, and then they are like five points ahead of DeAndre Jordan in terms of relative value. Not too much to like from Orlando there. Not surprising. Uh, Brooklyn is, while it should be a good matchup, it's really difficult to get to Orlando because of how they're set up right now. They just don't have enough legitimate NBA bodies. On to the Sixers. Do we have any news on the Sixers that we have to be worried about? Seth Curry probable. So let's go ahead and get everything done for the Sixers again. I took Curry out, so we're going to have to run at least some new numbers. We know how to do most of this at this point. So Shake Milton, 
I think him playing 27 minutes is super reasonable, which means that we'll give 21 more to Curry, and then he's been playing monstrous minutes as of late. Uh, past six games, 36 minutes a game. I'm going to go to 33 just to not overreact. We'll put Joel Embiid in for, I mean, he played 36, 35, 36, 36. So 35 feels safe to me here. I always have to worry a little bit about Embiid. Straight backup center minutes go to Dwight Howard, which means that I can give Tobias Harris minutes at the four. He gets his full 36. Uh, backup there will be Mike Scott. I'll give him 12 minutes. I can give Ben Simmons his full 36, I guess. Which gives Matisse Thibel 12 and 4. So we'll put him at 16. Danny Green, 28 minutes, leaving 4 additional minutes for Furkan Korkmaz. That feels wrong. But he only played 2 the last time out, so that makes some sense. Let's grab these updated Philly rates. Uh, I know I made changes for Seth Curry. Actually, I didn't even make changes for Seth Curry being out, but let's double check just in case I did, because I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't have a memory for that. Philly's easy, uh, an easy team to pull rates for because they don't really have anybody out. Uh, we'll take Maxi off because his usage could cloud things. We'll take Isaiah Joe off because I don't really think that he plays. I think the rest of these guys can hold. Yeah. Perfect. Let's just do a quick cursory look here. 21% usage here. Make that 21.5. Give him a little bit of a bump. Danny Green at 13. Embiid at 35 and a half. Make that 34 and a half. Seth Curry, 16 and a half. Make that 17.3. Shake Milton. That'll work. Tobias, 23. That'll work. Yeah, these guys were already in where they needed to be. So for Philly... Against Dallas, first game of the night. Projections look good. Joel Embiid, Ben Simmons, Harrison Curry. If we look at the summary information, Philly and Philly. Hope you guys like this, uh, the way that I'm displaying this here. I'm going to clean it up and make it look a lot better, but I wanted to be able to put the whole slate in context. So, I still have Embiid behind Jokic by a point and a half, even $500 cheaper on DraftKings. Uh, about a point on FanDuel. I have Embiid and Vooch uh, as basically equals on FanDuel. Embiid about a point, a little over a point and a half better than Vooch on DraftKings. Simmons is like a edge of the top 10 type guy. Man, there's no value on this slate. It's craziness. Embiid looks good. Uh, ownership will tell a big story. If Jokic is heavily owned, I'll pivot to Embiid or vice versa. Uh, Andres, Embiid has not been terrible lately. So much so that in the past 30 days, Joel Embiid is a 1.6 FanDuel point per minute guy. Uh, only guy that's been better than Joel Embiid over the past month has been Giannis. So, that's a crazy take to have. Sacramento Kings, a team that I feel like I never understand. Two teams to go before we get out of here. And honestly, I need to hurry up. But we have had a lot to talk about as of late. I'm guessing this rotation is their new rotation. Glenn Robinson the third, no longer with the team. Let's go ahead and remove him. Actually, did I delete his minutes? Okay, he didn't have any. Good. All right, so they went to a eight-man rotation on the 23rd. I have a hard time believing that happens again. But we're going to have to deal with that at least a little bit. Fox at needs probably some more minutes actually if they're going to go eight man rotation then i probably need to start from scratch here we'll go to 35 minutes on De'Aaron fox we'll give Corey joseph that straight backup run 13 minutes plus a couple additional minutes we had marvin bagley start at the three or at the five at the three good god 
uh, Bagley started that last game. So let's look at this rotation a little bit and see what sh really did shake out. So they went Fox, Bagley, Holmes, Heald, Barnes. So Barnes started at the three. That uh, to, I hate the idea of starting Bagley at the four, but whatever. They're going to do it anyway. And Bagley and Holmes split the center minutes. They did not play Hassan Whiteside, which I think is really crazy. I actually think he's going to end up on a contender in the near future. So I think that we give Rashawn Holmes 28 minutes. I think we give Marvin Bagley the 20 minutes at backup center and then another 10 minutes at power forward. I think that has to be the way that that goes. Daquan Jeffries is the guy that's actually still in the rotation, which is kind of nuts. So if we just give Jeffries like normal backup run at 18 minutes, that will allow us to give 20 minutes to Harrison Barnes at the four 16 more at the three. I can give Buddy Heald his 36 minutes at the two. I can give 32 minutes to Halliburton. Although last couple games, he's played a little bit more than that. So let's give him 33. That leaves me six minutes left over. I don't know who that guy is going to be. They didn't play Jabari Parker. They didn't play Whiteside. They don't have Glenn Robinson anymore. Bielitsa is just not going to get played. So Whiteside COVID? Whiteside COVID. Appreciate you guys. That makes a lot of sense then. Cool. Not that it matters. I wasn't going to project him in anyway, but uh, good to know. Didn't see that note there. I didn't scroll down on Sacramento because I didn't think there was any news. I'm just going to give those six minutes to Jabari Parker and call it a day. Kind of interesting, though. Let's check out the rates for Sacramento. So let's take Whiteside off. We'll take Robinson off. We'll take B Jelly off. We need to take anybody else off here. Not. We'll take Metu off so his usage doesn't cloud things. And Robert Woodard. All right. Buddy Heald, 22% usage. Close enough. Make it 21. De'Aaron Fox, 30. Cool. 10% assist. Good. Barnes, 16 and a half. Good. Bags, 23. Make it 22. Rashawn Holmes. Actually, I got to bump Bagley's rebounding rate. A little bit. Holmes, 15 and a half. We'll make it 16. Halliburton, 14% usage with these guys off the floor. Let's cut him down even further. Let's see what we get out of Sacramento here. Taking on the Knicks. This is going to be bad. It's a bad spot. Yeah, Fox and not much else. We add Sacramento. Uh, really difficult to look at the Kings. It's just a tough spot against the Knicks. It's a terrible DFS spot. That's not what I wanted to do. You go there. You go there. Perfect. Final game, guys. Final team, I mean. The Washington Wizards. The Wizards. Beal. Russ. Oh, that's pretty easy. Rui playing monstrous minutes right now. Going to have to give him a bit of a bump. Robin Lopez played less. I'm going to give one of those minutes immediately to Rui. Get him to 33. Alex Len didn't play at all. I'm going to take him right out of the rotation now. Give one more to Rui. Got Mo Wagner at 16 minutes. I'm going to move him all the way up to 20. So Rui at 34 makes sense. Bertans, I think, at 30 needs the whole... Actually, I should probably make it 29. I like Russell Westbrook's minutes. 
260 people, 160 likes. You guys are the best. Uh, I'm going to give Beal an extra minute at 37. Howell Neto. 22 seems fine. Garrison Matthews can probably pick up two, go to 17. Most of this seems okay. Three minutes to Bonga and call it. All these rates for... Uh, all these rates for the Wizards should be okay. Hmm. Yeah, this... I don't have much else that I would want to change here. Is there anything good for the Wizards against the Nugs? Westbrook, Beal, and that is about it. And that is going to pack it in for us, guys. We are through the entire roster. I didn't save this at all. That was dumb. Yeah, for the Wizards, just to hit on any news, Q tag on Bertans, right knee, soreness. Um, if we just look at their note on him... I don't even have one, so we'll see where we end up there. Those minutes won't matter all that much. Let's go ahead and uh, check out the final run. So those are the guys that I expect to be good, basically in this order. Let's run a crunch and figure out where the optimals are. How about that? Shout out to you guys for being here. Thanks to Fantasy Cruncher as well. Thanks to awesomeo.com. Go check out all of our good stuff. Use the promo code college if you want. You can get uh, half off our first week of college basketball projections. That's kind of fun. Tons of content coming up today. I'm on all of it. So tune in there. All righty. First up, FanDuel Optimals. Here we go. Where will we be? Fan Duel Optimal is Derek Rose, Monty Morris, Quickly, Seth Curry, Michael Porter Jr., Will Barton, Giannis, Julius Randle, Nikola Vucevic. Okay. Okay. That looks all right. I mean, it's gross. Don't get me wrong. That is not a fun, fun lineup at all. Ooh, yuck. Yuck, yuck, yuck. I like that in the three lineups that we put in here, all full exposure, all three have a different center. One with Vooch, one with Jokic, one with Embiid. That's how close these guys are. So let's get a crunch and get an idea of how we actually feel about the slate on FanDuel. Looking like Chalk Quickly is the most likely scenario. Chalk Michael Porter. I'm going to be heavy on Quickly, Porter, Seth Curry. And this is if the lock was in like five minutes. Quickly, Porter, Curry, Giannis, Randall, Embiid, Murray Barton, Jokic. Ooh. So basically what this is saying is there's not a ton of value. Because Seth, Seth Curry isn't going to be a fun one. Will Barton's not going to be fun. Monty Morris isn't going to be fun. Center on FanDuel is coin flip on Embiid, Jokic, and Vooch. I'd say just play more of the lowest owned guy in a GPP. But quickly looks to be the main star so far, at least from a FanDuel perspective. That's where we're at. So let's move to DraftKings now, and then let's get out of here. Because i got a ton more work to do. 264 people, though. We're slowly growing this bad boy. And I could just also be a little heavy on Seth Curry. We'll find that out as we move along. Uh, oh, yeah, the process. So, DK in optimal lineup on DraftKings to start the day. Quickly, Rose, Barton, Bagley, Jokic, Morris, Giannis, Brooke Lopez. 
that's where we're at right now. You can get four nuggets, including Zeke Naji, in my second most optimal lineup. That's gross. That's where we stand for optimals on DraftKings. If we want to take a quick look at expected exposures. Very, 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 very chalky quickly and rose quickly in particular on DraftKings is a no brainer value right now showing up a ton 70 plus percent. He's going to have very high ownership, especially if he starts rose two and then there's just nothing to be found on DraftKings. That's why you see someone like Zeke Naji showing up so much, even at 20 minutes. There are no pay down options today. Uh, it is it is really bleak on DK. So you're going to see some guys in projected ownership that pop up that you don't really want to get to. Whew. All right, so that's what DraftKings looks like, which means whew, that's it. We're done. Process show is complete for Thursday, February 25th. Contenders videos about to be recorded. I'm on the strategy show with Adam Kaufman this morning. So that'll be at 10 o'clock. Go watch that if you want. We could really break down this slate. And then I have office hours at 1 p.m. in our premium Slack. So if you are a premium slub, slub. <laughs> Sorry, guys. If you are a premium sub, uh, tune into that one. I'll be in our Slack just answering questions for an hour. Uh, that will be, yeah, one o'clock. And then live before lock tonight, lock is at seven. So I will be on from six to seven with uh, Greg Ehrenberg. And then we'll be on for an extra half hour to talk a little bit about jock market. So guys, I bid you adieu. Thank you for joining me. If you can hit the like button on your way out the door, that would be great. Let me know in the comments section, who are your favorite plays for the slate? It doesn't matter, FanDuel, DraftKings, or if you have any questions, uh, happy to answer them uh, in the comments section of the video. I appreciate you guys a ton. Have a good day, good luck. I am out of here. Pow, goodbye.